So let's have a overall practice ng differential equation that covers from elimination of arbitrary constant papunta sa application ng first order differential equation. So let's start first with elimination of arbitrary constant. Kumbaga, um, ito muna yung unang topic natin. Okay? So let's uh, have some practice tungkol dito. So, let's just say meron akong problem. Ah, problem. General equation pala. So, I have a general equation of AX plus B. Ayan. So, eto, si A at saka si B, naka-arbitrary constant silang dalawa. So, how can we eliminate these two arbitrary constants? So, there are three steps. Unang step is, you're going to count how many arbitrary constants are given. So, kung makikita natin dito, there are like two arbitrary constants. So, therefore, we have a total of two arbitrary constants. Okay? Ngayon, sa second step, once you determine the number of arbitrary constants, then that would be also the number of times you're going to differentiate the given general equation. Kumbaga, kapag ano like, since dalawa ang arbitrary constant mo rito, which is si A at saka si B, then dalawang beses mo siyang i-differentiate yung general equation mo. Okay? Dalawang beses, din, dalawang beses mo rin siyang i-differentiate. So kunin natin una yung first derivative nito. So we will have A. And kunin natin second derivative nito, we will have 0. So you see, Ah, tala, sorry. <clears throat> so you see, tapos na tayo dyan. Okay? Ngayon, here comes to our third step. If after mo ma-differentiate o makuha yung final differentiation ng isang general equation and andun pa rin yung arbitrary constant, like at least one of them ay given pa rin siya, then you're going to find another way or method na ma-eliminate mo siya. Pero, after mo mag-differentiate siya and there is no more arbitrary constant, then yun na yung magiging final answer. Okay? Nag-gets nyo ako. Kung bagay yung third step, basically, um, kung after mo mag-differentiate lahat, like, ano, like, nakuha mo yung final differentiation niya, tapos meron pang arbitrary constant na titira, yun, maghanap ka ng ibang way. Pero kapag wala naman, yun yung final sagot mo. Since, ito yung final differentiation mo, and as you can see, wala ng arbitrary constant, then yun yung magiging final answer mo. So the final answer is, y second prime is equal to 0. So ganun lang naman ang gagawin ninyo pagdating sa elimination of arbitrary constant. So let's have another problem. Ito naman, we have y is equal to a times tangent x. So, we are asked to eliminate the given arbitrary constant. Now, if you're going to take a look, isa lang si arbitrary constant mo, which is si a. Okay? So, ibig sabihin nun, i-differentiate natin itong general equation once. Okay? Isang, isang beses lang. So, therefore, kung kukunin natin yung first derivative nito, we will have y prime is equal to a times second square leg. Ayan na siya. And ano ulit yung third step natin? Kapag andyan pa rin si arbitrary constant, kahit at least one of them, then you're going to find another way to eliminate the arbitrary constant, di ba? Or kung wala naman, yan yung final sagot mo. Right? So if you're going to take a look, ito yung final differentiation niya. And andito pa rin si arbitrary constant. So, paano to? Yun, we're going to think of some ways or at least a method para matanggal tong si arbitrary constant. So, for me, what I can apply is substitution method. Itong si substitution method na tinutukoy ko ay isa sa mga method na ginagamit natin sa, sa pag-solve ng system of equation. Kasi kung ma-recall nyo yung lessons nyo sa high school, uh, high school mathematics, when we say methods in solving a system of equations, tatlong methods yun eh. Uh, substitution method, elimination method, or graphing method. So for this case, ang gagamitin ko ay substitution method. 
And since kasi, when we're talking about system of equations, ibig sabihin nun, dapat more than one equations ang gagamit. So therefore, kung gagamit ako ng substitution method, dapat meron akong at least dalawang equations. So I have my first equation, ito yung general equation natin, at yung pangalawang equation, which is yung first derivative ng general equation. So ang gagawin ko, kukunin ko itong si second equation. Okay. So ilagay ko siya rito. Y prime is equal to A times second squared x. Tapos after that, hahanapin ko si A. At pagkahanap ko si A, i-substitute ko siya sa general equation niya rito. So, Uh, to find my a here, I will divide both sides by second squared x. So therefore, meron na kong a as y prime all over second squared of x. Ayan. Or, remember na kapag 1 all over second x meron ka, it's automatically equal to cosine x, right? So if meron tayong second squared x, So, maging 1 all over second squared x to. So, we can have 1, ah, sorry. So, we can have y prime times cosine squared of x. So, basically, yun. Okay? Pili na lang kayo which would you prefer. Itong si a or itong, itong si a na hindi naka-fraction. So, pick which one kasi pares ang naman silang dalawa. So, for me, pipiliin ko to. Okay? So, na yun, anong gagawin natin? As I mentioned, kung anong nakuha mong A, isubstitute mo siya sa, ano, sa general equation o yung first equation mo. So, kung nilagay ko siya rito, we will have y is equal to A times tangent x. And, tawag na ito, since yung A ko ay y prime times cosine squared x, so meron akong y prime times cosine squared x times tangent x. If you're going to take a look, wala na si arbitrary constant dito, di ba? Di ba wala na siya? There's no arbitrary constant. Therefore, pwede na to as your final answer. Pwede na. Okay, there's no problem. However, kailangan isimplify natin to para at least, uh, taong to, para, uh, among taong nito, para at least mas convenient pa siya or simplified yung final sagot mo. Okay? So, remember, na si tangent x, kung maalala nyo, sa lessons nyo sa trigonometry, ano siya eh? Sin x all over cosine x. Di ba? So, we can rewrite that. Okay? We can rewrite tangent x as sin x all over cosine x. Ayan. Then, after that, pwede ko siyang isimplify. Wait lang, burayin ko lang to ah. Ayan. Then, pwede ko siyang isimplify. Okay? So, kung makikita nyo, cosine squared x sa kaliwa, tapos sa baba, meron cosine x. We can simplify that. Okay? We can cancel out. Si cosine x sa baba, maka-cancel. Then, yung si cosine squared na sa kaliwa, mababawasan yung exponent niya. Uh, ito, by 1. So, magiging cosine, uh, cosine, uh, ano yun? Wait lang, wait lang. Ulitin ko para mas, mas mag-get siya. Okay. Basically, isi-simplify ko to. Okay, itong dalawang cosine x. Kasi una, meron tayong cosine squared x sa kaliwa at meron tayong cosine x sa baba. So, ang gagawin ko, pwede ko siyang i-cancel si cosine x sa baba and yung exponent ng cosine x dito, mababawasan ng exponent by 1. So, 2 minus 1 magiging 1 yung exponent ng cosine x mo rito sa kaliwa. So, therefore, we will have y is equal to y prime, dalangan, y prime times cosine raised to 1 of x times sine x. Ayan na siya. So, ito na yung magiging final answer ko. Or pwede nyo pa siyang isimplify kung gusto nyo. Okay? So, tawag nito. <coughs> If kung marirecall nyo sa ano sa lesson nyo sa trigonometry rin, meron kasi rin tinatawag na, no, na double angle identities. Kung baga like, kung meron kang sine of 2x 
meron kang 2 times uh, sin x times cosine x. Okay? So, can we apply it here? Dito. Sa dalawang trigonometric functions na to. The answer is yes. Pwede naman. Okay, pwede naman. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin is, we can put the, ano, the fraction 2 all over 2 dito para makuha natin ng sine of 2x. So, we have y is equal to y prime times 2 all over 2, okay, times cosine x times sine x. Okay? So, ulitin ko, paano ko nakuha si 2 all over 2 para makuha natin si sine of 2x. Kasi meron tayong cosine x at sine x, kulang na lang si 2. Okay? So, therefore, para maging satisfying yung ano, sagot ko, I will have 2 all over 2. Kasi overall, 2 all over 2 is 1. Okay? Then after that, ipag-combine ko tong dalawang trigonometric function dito sa 2. So, meron tayong like y is equal to y prime times 2 times cosine x times sine x all over 2. Okay? And remember, na si 2 times sine x times cosine x is equal to sine of 2x. Okay? So, kahit na magkahiwala yung position ng cosine x mo at sine x, it's still gonna ha have the same result. So, therefore, we can have y is equal to y prime times uh, sine of 2x all over 2. So, pwede na rin to as your final answer. Wala naman tong problema. Okay? <clears throat> so, ganun lang yun. Alright? So, pick which one would you prefer? This one or this one? It's still the same. Kahit na i ayusin nyo lang yung, ano, yung format nito, the answer is still correct. Okay? So, yeah. Um, these are all correct answers. Naman. Okay? So, let's have another problem. So if we're going to take a look, mer meron tayong like trigonometric function, ito, which is sine x, tapos meron tayong variable na x. Okay? And if you're going to take a look, we have two arbitrary constants. So I think you, you already know what to do. Okay? So basically, if, tang ito, if meron tayong dalawang arbitrary constant, that means we're going to differentiate the equation twice. So we will have the first derivative y prime is equal to a times cosine x plus b. Then, meron tayong second derivative which is negative a times sine x. Ayan. Plus 0. Kasi si b, arbitrary constant lang siya, and ang derivative ng constant ay 0. So yun. Na yun, ano ulit yung third step natin? Kung sa final differentiation mo, meron pa rin siyang arbitrary constant, kahit one of them, or at least one of them. Then, ibig sabihin nun, you're going to find a way or method na matanggal mo siya. Unless, wala na arbitrary constant. Kung baga, like, for example, kung nakuha mo yung derivative nito, and wala ng arbitrary constant, then yun yung magiging final answer mo. Di ba nasabi ko na siya kanina yun? Pero na yun, if you're going to take a look, andito pa rin si arbitrary constant, di ba? So what are the ways that we can do para matanggal tong arbitrary constant na to? So, ako, gagamitin ko pa rin yung substitution method. Kasi para sa akin, using substitution method will actually help me to get my, ano, my answer. Okay? And since, Itong substitution method, pang system of equations siya, di ba? So that means at least two equations meron ako. So meron akong first equation, tapos yung first derivative dito, magiging second equation siya. Then yung third, ah, third tulog. Yung second derivative nito ay magiging third equation ko. I'll start from this one because this one is simple. Okay? So we have y second prime is equal to negative a times sine x. So, dito, if you're going to observe, um, hanapin ko si a. Tapos, pag hanap ko si a, okay, isubstitute ko siya dito sa second equation. 
Okay? So, I will divide both sides by negative sine x. So, if I'm going to divide both sides by negative sine x, ang mangyari dyan is I will have negative y second prime all over sine x is equal to a. Okay? Or, or remember, na si 1 all over sine x is equal to cos second x siya. So, I can have negative y second prime times cos second of x is equal to a. Okay? So, pili na lang kayo which one would you prefer. Okay? Now, nakuha ko na si a. And pipiliin ko is ito na lang. I think this one is much simpler kaysa dito. Okay? It's not because of how it looks like, but because of the given function. Kasi kapag sine cosine, nakasimplified na yun. Pero kapag mga cosecant, tangent, mga ganun, iba na yun. Pero again, it's up to you kasi pares lang naman ang, ang mag, makukuha mong sagot dito. Okay? Anyways, so as I mentioned, I will substitute A sa second equation. So second equation, meron tayong y prime is equal to A times cosine x plus B. So I substitute natin dito si A, we will have negative y second prime all over sine x times cosine x plus b. So, kung ikukumbine mo si cosine x at saka si sine x, magiging y second, uh, negative y second prime times cosine x all over sine x. Tapos, may plus b. Siyempre, remember na si ano, cosine x all over sine x is equal to cotangent x. Okay? This is cotangent x in other words. So therefore, ang mangyayari dyan, we will have um, y prime is equal to negative y second prime times cotangent x. And here's the thing. Di ba kanina, nasubstitute natin yung CA dito sa second equation, di ba? So meaning, wala na si A. We're good to go. However, however, si B, andyan pa rin siya. Kung baga like na ako, meron pa tayong arbitrary constant dito sa second equation. So anong gagawin natin? Okay? So you can find other methods then. Okay? So for me, ang gagawin ko is I will still use substitution method para hanapin ko si B. Okay? Then, after makuha ko si B, i-substitute ko siya sa general equation natin, which is yung first equation natin. Okay? Yun yung gagawin ko. Alright? And, yeah. So, ang gagawin ko is I'll transpose the term, itong first term na to, sa kaliwa. So, I will have y prime plus y second prime times cotangent x is equal to B. Tapos, since nakuha ko na si B, isubstitute ko siya sa first equation. So, yung first equation natin, if you're going to recall, we have y is equal to a times sine x plus bx. Ayan siya. Okay? So, remember na si a ay ito, di ba? Pinili ko. So, isubstitute natin siya dito. So, we have y is equal to a times negative Oh, wait, sorry, a times quantity negative y second prime all over sine x times sine x plus yung b mo, which is ito, y prime plus y second prime times cotangent x, then times x. So kung mapapansin nyo, dito sa third equation, ah, sorry, third equation, sa so first equation, Ay, wait lang. Parang may mali akong ginawa. Sorry, sorry guys. Wait lang ah. Sorry, sorry. Nakalimutan ko tanggalin si A. <laughs> sorry, sorry guys. Sorry guys. <clears throat> Ayan. Okay na. So yun, as you can see, si A naging eto. Negative y second prime all over sine x. Tapos si B, which is ito, naging y prime plus y second prime times cotangent x. So as you can see, dito pa lang kung makikita mo, parang ano na eh, wala nang ano, di ba? 
wala nang arbitrary constant. So meaning, ito na yung magiging sagot mo. However, mas maganda kung i-simplify natin to. Okay? Para mas convenient natin to tignan. So if you're going to take a look at the first term, di ba may sign x sa baba at sa kanan? So we can cancel them both. So magiging, ay sorry, so magiging uh, y is equal to negative y second prime. Then we can copy the second term, which is ito yun. Ayan. y prime plus y second prime times cotangent x times x. So ito, pwede na to as your final answer. Pwede na yan. Okay? Or kung gusto nyo, i-reformat to. Okay, first, i-distribute na itong si x dito sa expression na to. We will have y is equal to negative y second prime plus x times y prime plus x times y second prime times cotangent x. Then, itong, yung, itong naka y second prime, pwede nyo siyang ipagsama tapos i-factor nyo sila. Okay? So, what I can do is ipagsama ko to itong first term sa, sa dulo, so magiging y is equal to x times y prime plus x times y second prime times cotangent x minus y second prime. Then, yung itong dalawa, sabi ko kanina, i-factor out natin to ng y second prime. So magiging y second prime times quantity x times cotangent x minus 1. So, yun na yung magiging final answer na rin dito. So, once again, it's up to you. Which one would you prefer? Basta, ang mahalaga is you know how to simplify things. Okay? So, I'm going to stop right here kasi ito lang ang kaya kong magbigay. Okay? If there are some other ways for you to simplify this one, then there's no problem. Okay? So, how about this problem? Kaya, meron tayong exponential function. And meron pa yung dalawang C, pero meron silang subscript na number. May C1 at may C2. So, remember, yung steps natin, we're going to count how many arbitrary constant. At kung ilan yung arbitrary constant na yun, yan din yung ilang beses natin siyang i-differentiate. So, since kasi meron tayong dalawang arbitrary constant, so what we can do here is we will differentiate the general equation twice. So, we will have y prime is equal to 3C1E, ay, naging L. Yan. E raised to 3X minus 2C2E raised to negative 2 x Then, yun. Second, ano, derivative naman, we will have 9C1E raised to 3X and plus 4C2E raised to negative 2 x Ayan. So, ano ulit yung third step natin? Kapag sa final derivative mo o final differentiation mo, kapag meron pa siyang arbitrary constant, at least one of them, di ba you're going to find uh, find ways or a way na matanggal tong mga arbitrary constant na yan, di ba? Unless, yan na yung maging ano, final answer mo. So as you can see, we have two arbitrary constant given pa rin siya. Kung baga hindi ito natatatanggal. Okay? So what are we going to do? So, ang gagawin natin dito, okay, is that we can use yung yung ginagawa ko kanina, yung substitution method. We can do that. There's no problem. Okay? Pero maging mahaba yung process na to. Okay? So, yes, we can do substitution method. Okay? So, there are two methods na lang ang share ko sa inyo. Una is yung substitution method. Tapos yung pangalawa, yung shortcut method na tinatawag natin determinant method. So, yung determinant method kasi pang matrix yan. And why is it that meron tayong method na pang matrix? Later, I'll discuss it. For now, let's focus on substitution method. So, again, since kasi yung substitution method pang system of equation siya. So, meron tayong first equation, second equation, and third equation. So, dito, ang gagawin ko is I'm going to pick the simplest one. Okay, I mean, I mean like the simplest um, equation para I can easily substitute it to the other equations. So, pipiliin ko to itong si first equation kasi ito lang mas, in my opinion, simple kaysa sa mga ibang equations. 
So I'm going to start with the first equation na cy is equal to c1 e raised to 3x plus c2 e raised to negative 2x. So, di ba meron yung dalawang arbitrary constant? So, as I, as I mentioned earlier sa mga previous problems natin, pagdating sa substitution method, pipili ka kung ilan, oh, sorry, kung bit, ulitin ko nga, Okay, di ba sa substitution method, dito, sa application na to, pipiliin mo kung which one of the arbitrary constant na gusto mong hanapin muna. Di ba? So, for me, hanapin ko muna si C1 bago si C2. Okay? So, transpose ko to itong si C2 sa kaliwa. Meron na tayong y, C2, e, raised to negative 2x, is equal to C1, e, raised to 3x. So, i-divide ko both sides yan by e raised to 3x para makuha natin si c1. Meron na tayong y minus c2e raised to negative 2x all over e raised to 3x. So, saan ko na siya isasubstitute? So, the next ano, equation na isasubstitute natin is either itong dalawa. Second equation or third equation. Pero for me, isubstitute ko si c1 sa second equation. Mas simple pa to kaysa sa ano. Kaysa ito. Okay? So, we will have y prime is equal to 3 times yung c1, which is yung y minus c2e raised to negative 2x all over e raised to 3x. Tapos, kopyain lang natin yung mga ibang terms. Ayan. So, eto si e raised to 3x sa denominator at saka sa kanan, we can cancel them both. Makancel natin sa yung dalawa. So, we have y prime is equal to 3 times quantity uh, y minus c2e raised to negative 2x. <coughs> so, yun, minus 2 times c2e raised to negative 2x. Ayan na. So, after that, let's now uh, distribute itong c3 dito sa expression na to. So, we have y prime is equal to 3y minus 3c2 e raised to negative 2x minus 2c2 e raised to negative 2x c2. Yeah. So, ipag-combine natin itong dalawang terms ato. Kasi these two are very similar. Okay? In terms of what they have. So, merong silang c2 at e raised to negative 2x. So, ipag-combine mo sila. So, we will have 5c2 e raised to negative Ayan na siya. <clears throat> and dito, pag na-substitute mo na yung ano, yung ah, uh, ito? Yung A, I mean, sorry, yung C1 dyan sa, sa, ano, sa second equation, wala na si C1. However, si C2 meron. Okay? So, hanapin natin si C2. So, i-transpose ko to si 3y sa, ano, sa kaliwa. We have y prime minus 3y is equal to negative 5 C2e raised to negative 2x. So, divide natin to both sides by negative 5C2. Ay, sorry, bad C2. Negative 5E raised to negative 2x. So, we will have negative y prime minus 3y all over 5E raised to negative 2x is equal to C2. Ayan na siya. So, what to do now? So, ang gagawin natin is i, ano tawag ito? I-substitute natin si C1 at saka si C2 dito sa cooling equation natin para makuha natin yung sagot. Pero bago muna natin gawin yan, i-substitute natin muna tong si C2 sa C1. Okay? Bakit? Kasi ito, si C1, meron siyang C2. So, i-substitute muna natin si C2 sa C1. Okay? So, um, gawa ko ng border para di tayo mahirapan. Okay? Gawa ko ng border. Okay? There we go. Ayan. So, yun. Punto tayo dito sa C1. So, we have y minus C2 e raised to negative 2x all over e raised to 3x is equal to C1. So, remember, si C2 Okay, siya ay, ano, quantity negative, wait lang, mali ako, quantity negative y prime minus 3y all over 
5e raised to negative 2x times e raised to negative 2x all over e raised to 3. Ayan na siya. So let's simplify. Una, I can cancel out the C e raised to negative 2x sa denominator at saka sa kanan. So we have y minus quantity negative y prime minus 3y all over 5. Ayan na siya. Meron na. Okay. Then, okay, what I can do here is, ito, di ba may negative sign sa labas at saka sa loob. So, pwede ko itong gawin positive. So, we will have, uh, mag-solve nila ako rito, y plus y prime minus 3y all over 5. All over e raised to 3x. So, isimplify pa natin to. I can make this one into a whole fraction. So, if you're going to make this into a whole fraction, magiging 5y minus y prime minus 3y all over 5 to. All over e raised to 3x. So, paano, paano to nangyari? So, try mo mag-apply ng butterfly technique dito. So, di ba we have y plus y prime minus 3y all over 5, di ba? And since itong si y, full term lang siya, di ba? So, we can have a denominator one. So, let's do butterfly technique. Multiply natin si y sa 5. So, y times 5, 5y. Next, copy mo yung operation sa gitna, plus. Tapos yun, 1 times y prime minus 3y. So, magiging quantity y prime minus 3y. Okay? All over, multiply natin itong denominator, 1 times 5, magiging 5y. So, meron tayong 5y plus y prime minus 3y all over 5. O, diba? Ganun lang naman yung ginawa natin. Okay? You can, ano, uh, skip this one. Uh, skip to yung mali. You can go backwards like at least 10 seconds para maintindihan nyo kung paano ko nakuha yung ito. Yung ito. Okay? So, um, pwede ko pa rin tong isimplify. Okay? Kasi... Ito, si 5y at saka si negative 3y, pwede natin siyang i-combine. So, 5y plus y prime minus 3y. Okay. We have 2y plus y prime. Kasi 5y minus 3y is 2y. Tama ba ako? Ay, sorry. Ayan, tama nga, tama nga. Kasi 5y minus 3y magiging 2y yan. So, meron tayong 2y plus y prime. Now, we can still simplify this one okay, into a whole fraction. So, by reciprocating, i-multiply ko itong si e raised to 3x dyan sa 5. Meron na tayong um, wait lang ha. Meron na tayong 2y plus y prime all over 5 times e raised to 3x. So, yun magiging c1 natin. So, that's it. Okay na. We have, we have already found our c1. Ngayon, anong gagawin natin? Okay. Ang gagawin natin is we will substitute everything dito sa third equation. Copyan natin kaya ito. Okay. Ah. Ayan. So, ilagay natin siya dito. Saan ko ba po yung mga Dito na lang. Tapos gawa na lang ako ng border. Okay? So yan. Meron na tayo ganitong uh, equation. Na yung substitute natin lahat. So we have y second prime is equal to yung c1 mo which is 2y plus y prime all over 5e raised to 3x times e raised to 3x plus 4 times yung C2 mo, which is negative y prime minus 3y all over 5e raised to negative 2x. Tapos yun, copy natin yung mga ibang terms dito. So, ang pwede kong gawin, i-cancel ko si e raised to 3x dito sa denominator at saka sa kanin. And the same thing dito sa second term, cancel natin si e raised to negative 2x sa denominator at saka sa kanin. So, meron na tayong y prime, uh, y second prime is equal to 
9 times 2y plus y prime all over 5. Plus 4 times quantity negative y prime minus 3y all over 5. Okay? So, ano pang pwede ko pang gawin? So, ang gagawin ko is, taong nito, ilabas ko rito si yan. And they wait, wait lang. Sige, ang um, taong nito, i-distribute natin tong si constant dito sa expression nila. So, magsulat ako rito. So, we have y second prime is equal to 9 times quantity 2y plus y prime all over 5. Tapos ito, magiging negative na to. So, negative 4 times y prime minus 3y all over 5. Pwede ko silang ipag-combine dalawa. Kasi both of them are similar fractions dahil may pareha silang denominator. So, we can add them together. So, we will have 9 times quantity 2y plus y prime minus 4 times quantity y prime minus 3y all over so after that, mag cross multiply ako rito. Okay, so y ah, y second prime times 5 magiging y second, ah, sorry, 5 times y second prime. Then ko pang ko itong mga ibang terms rito. So what to do? Let's now simplify. So kung mapapansin nyo guys, iba na substitute natin yung ano, yung a, ah, sorry, yung c1 at saka si c2. Diba? From this naging ganito na, di ba? So, pwede na to as your final answer, pero hindi pa to nakasimplify. Okay? Since kasi wala ng arbitrary constant, we can leave it as our final answer, but it's better to simplify the, ano, the final answer. Okay? So, malapit na tayo rito. So, we have 5y second, second prime. So, ito yung, ano ito eh, 18y plus 9y prime minus 4y prime plus 12y. So, ipag-combine natin silang lahat. So, 18y plus 12y magiging 30y. 9y prime minus 4y prime magiging 5y. Ah, so, yan tama. 5y prime yan. Okay? So, what we're going to do is we will divide both sides by 5. Okay? Kasi itong si 5y second prime, 30y at saka si 5y prime, all of them are divisible by 5. So we will have y second prime is equal to 6y plus y prime. So ito na yung magiging sagot natin dito. Or kung gusto mong gawin general form to, i-transpose mo lang si y second prime sa kanan or transpose mo lang tong si 6y at si y prime sa kaliwa. It's up to you. Okay? So for me, gawin ko i-transpose si, transpose ko si y second prime sa kanan so, I will have 0 is equal to 6y uh, plus y prime minus y second prime. Ayan na siya. So, diba? so, it's up to you which one would you prefer as your final answer. And that's basically how you do substitution method. Pero, as I mentioned earlier, meron tayong simple way to solve this one. Alright, there's a simple way for you to solve this one. Okay? So, um, gawin, ang gagawin ko rito is I'm going to restart all over again. And let's hope na kung yung simplest method na to ay magkasimpares ang sila dito sa sagot natin. Okay? So, <clears throat> that's it. So, let's go. Okay, gamitin natin itong so-called na simple technique. Okay. So, nilagay ko rito yung sagot natin. Para... Just to be sure na lang, okay, para, basta like, you know, just to, just to take a look kung tama ba talaga o hindi, okay? So, remember, anong ginawa natin kanina rito? Like, we differentiated this one twice, di ba? So, gawin nga natin to ulit. So, we have the second equation natin, dito sa ito yun. Then, yung third equation natin, which is yung second derivative ng general equation natin ay ito. Okay? So that's it. So now, what are we going to do? We will apply what we call as the determinant method na sinabi ko kanina. So, ang gagawin ko rito is, i-transpose ko to yung mga y's na to 
sa kanang side. So, ano mangyayari? So, we will have 0, 0. Okay. Tapos, copyin ko lang to lahat. Okay. So, copy this one. Copy, paste. Ayan na siya. Ayan. Tapos, yung mga wise nila ay andito. Ayan na sila. Okay. Basically, ang ginawa ko rito ay transpose all of the y's on the left sa kanan. So, ang gagawin natin? We will apply the determinant method. So, um, we will put this one into a matrix form. So, mangyayari dyan, we will have C1E raised to 3x, 3C1E raised to 3x, 9C1 e raised to 3x. Then, ganun din sa, na, sa second terms. Okay. Ilang may 2x to. Then, negative 2, C2. E raised to negative 2x. And 4, C2, E raised to negative 2x. And, yung dulo, which is ito yun. <coughs> Sorry. Which is ito yun. Okay. Then, i-quit mo lahat sila sa 0. So, if you're, going, if you're going to recall, this is actually what you call as your Kramer's rule. Okay. Kapag meron kayong tatlong uh, linear, hindi, hindi naman sa linear, mali pala ako. Kung meron kayong tatlong equation, which is ito, mukha silang ganito, and meron silang tatlong terms, Okay, we can apply what we call as the Kramer's rule. So ito, as you can see, you have three equations. And you see, each of them may kanya-kanya silang tatlong terms, di ba? So we can apply Kramer's rule dito. So ang gagawin ko muna? So ang gagawin ko muna rito is, i-factor out ko to in a simple way possible. So dito sa first column, um, ma-factor out ko rito si C1 at saka si 3 x uh, E raised to 3 x Sa second column, C2, E raised to negative 2x ang ma-factor out ko rito. Then, sa last column, si negative 1. Kasi lahat sila ay factors ng negative 1. Okay? So, ano mangyayari kapag na-factor out mo to? So, ito mangyayari sa kanila. You will have uh, C1, E raised to 3x times C2, E raised to negative 2x times negative 1. Tapos, Dito, meron kang 1, 3, 9, 1, negative 2, 4, tapos y, y prime, at y second prime. Yan yung magiging resulta. So, gusto ko to tanggalin. And we will do that by dividing it on both sides. So, we will divide C1e raised to 3x times C2e raised to negative 2x times negative 1. Okay. So, mangyari. Yan. We will we will divide the equation by this group of terms. So, ano mangyari after that? So, matitira is yung matrix lang mismo. So, we have 1, 3, uh, 9, 1, negative 2, 4, tapos y, y prime at y second prime is equal to 0. So, ang gagawin natin is we will get the determinant of this matrix. So, there are two ways. Okay, the first way, sorry, sorry, there are two methods. The first method is common way on how would you get, okay, get the determinant. And the second method is yung much simpler pa kisa sa common method. So, gagamitin ko yung second method, okay? So, sa second method, basically, copy mo lang to yung ano meron sa loob. 1, 3, 9. 1, negative 2, 4. Y, Y prime, Y second prime. Tapos, copy mo ulit yung first two columns. So, meron tayong, uh, wait lang ha. So, meron tayong 1, 3, 9. 1, negative 2, 4. Ayan. So, anong gagawin natin? Kasi dito, meron kang dalawang, uh, ito, dalawang groups. Okay? Group of terms. Nakaparentesis siya. Dito, sa first group na to, you will achieve it by 
multiplying the diagonals. Okay? Na ganito. Okay? So, let's take it slow. So, sa diagonal una, let's multiply 1, negative 2, and y second prime. So, 1 times negative 2 times uh, y second prime, meron tayong negative 2y second prime. Ayan yun. Next, dito naman, the second diagonal, 1 times y prime times 9, meron tayong 9y prime. At yung dulo, or the last thing, or last term, multiply natin si y, 3 at saka si 4. So y times 3 times 4, meron tayong 12y. Okay? So that's it. Now, punta naman tayo sa second uh, group of terms naman dito. So, it's similar. Ganon din gagawin natin dito. We will uh, multiply terms diagonally three times. Uh, not, not three times, but by three diagonals. Okay? Pero pabaliktad. So, kung kanina, di ba, pag ganito tayo, di ba, we are going to multiply three diagonals. Dito naman, we will start from the bottom to the top. So, 9 times negative 2 times 1, uh, times y, meron tayong negative 18y. 4y prime times 1, meron tayong 4y prime lang. And lastly, y second prime times 3 times 1, meron tayong 3y second prime. O ba? So that's it. Now, what we're going to do is we will now uh, simplify further. So meron tayong negative 2y prime. Uh, wait lang, ay simple lang to. Plus 9y prime plus 12y. Hirap naman yung konsulot. Ah. <laughs> plus 12y, tama ba? Uh -huh. Okay, tama. Tapos ito, distribute natin itong negative dito. Sa expression na to, we will have plus 18y minus 4y prime minus 5y second prime. So now let's combine similar terms. Negative 2y prime minus negative 5y y second prime magiging negative 7y prime to. Hmm, I'm getting suspicious but okay, sige ma'am, natin natin. Next, 9y prime at saka si negative 4y prime magiging 5y prime to. And ito, 12y plus 18y magiging ano to? Magiging 30y. Teka lang nga, ba't ako nakakuha ng negative 7y second prime? Bakit kaya? Ah, wait lang. Baliktad kasi yung sulat ko. <laughs> sorry, sorry. This is 3. 3 to actually. This is 3. Hindi to 5. Mukha kasi siyang 5. Pero 3 to. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> 3 to 3. Sorry. So yun, negative 2 minus 3. Meron tayong negative 5. Tapos yung common factor nila na ito, uh, y second prime. Ayan. So that's it. Okay, ito na yung simplified form natin. Ah, yeah, tama. Okay na. So, ang gagawin natin, uh, i-copy natin to. Oh, wait lang ha. I-copy natin ito, ito, itong sagot natin dito. Okay? So, what we will have here is um dito na siya. Ganyan. Tapos is equal to Zero. And ito, actually, pwede pa, natin, pwede pa natin itong simplify kasi these terms are all divisible by 5. So we can factor out 5 here. So 5 times quantity negative y prime plus y plus 6y is equal to 0. So we will divide both sides by 5. So we have negative y second prime plus y plus 6 y yan, is equal to 0. And yan yung magiging final answer natin. And let's take a look. Yes. Tama ka tayo. Wait lang. I-arrange ko lang ito. Uh, 6y plus y minus y second time. Check na natin. Yes. Okay. 
wait lang, I forgot to put Y prime pala to, sorry. <laughs> y prime pala to. Nakalimutan ko lang to i-copya dito. So yun, tama nga tayo. We are all actually correct. See? So, again na, gagamitin nyo lang to kapag nakaganitong format siya. Okay? Kapag ganyan yung format niya, ha? Okay? It doesn't matter kung ano mang given. Basta dapat ganito yung format niya. Then you can use this technique. Okay? 